Unschooling has been on my mind a lot, and I know it's been on the mind of a lot of people on the internet because when I opened YouTube today, I immediately saw a video essay on unschooling and I clicked watch later on it, but I'm not gonna watch it yet because I wanted to record this and that was literally a reminder to sit down and record the script that I wrote yesterday that I almost just recorded as an audio and I might. I might just post it as an audio and edit out my face because I don't like my filming setup right now, but that's, that's totally fine. Let's talk about unschooling. Uh, this video right here, right here, right now, this is the video that is prompting me to talk about it. So we don't teach our children anything. Everything that they learn is in response to either their interests or their questions. We have no curriculum, we have no school hours. We really just respond whenever they wanna know something and do our best to make sure they really get it. And my big fear about free schooling was that if my kids only went towards what they were interested in, saving all of their real estate only for things they're interested in, not cramming it with anything necessary, I was concerned that they would never be interested in things like reading and writing and math. My son's six and it took some patience and not comparing myself to other moms, but this is his book. Look at this. Lamp. Egg. Jar. Lion. This is him doing this by himself. Copying down words from other places. Asking us more. Same with addition. Mom, what's seven plus five? It will come at the right time. But if you do not like this idea of sending your kids away for 40 hours a week and then wondering why they have no energy to do anything else, if you are not into your kids conforming, trust that you can follow their interests and they will learn everything they need to learn, not what other people need them to learn. So a half a century ago, if you had shared that with your neighbors, if you had pulled your kids from public schools and didn't give them a proper education and they didn't know how to write most of the alphabet at age six and you bragged about it, most people wouldn't even know because most of the public wouldn't even know. But now you can post about it in a video on TikTok and Twitter in the world and it will go viral everywhere. And people have been pulling their kids from public schools for ages and neglecting them. And we've known about it through memoirs such as Educated and people have gotten, have always gotten away with child neglect. But the difference that we've all observed today is that parents are now bragging about it and claiming it's good for their kids. And I, I'm sick of it. I'm like really, really sick of it. So I just wanted to talk about it. So hello, I'm Liz. I grew up in a cult and I overshare on the internet. I would rather people know me for something other than growing up in a cult, but I did grow up in a cult that was adjacent to unschooling. So I feel sometimes I feel like I have a very personal connection to the unschooling movement, even though my parents were homeschoolers and not unschoolers. Anyway, I'm ready today to overshare about America's public education. So first off, what is unschooling? According to Wikipedia, unschooling is a style of home education that allows the students' interest and curiosities to drive the path of learning. Rather than using a defined curriculum, unschoolers trust their children to gain their knowledge organically. Unschooling was popularized by an educator who was a teacher in the 1950s, John Holt. He was a former teacher who grew disillusioned with the way the American education system was set up. I understand getting disillusioned. So he decided to help parents pull their kids from public schools. And at first he advocated for homeschooling before he launched the unschooling movement. He actually started a newsletter that is still in circulation today, even though he is no longer with us, in which he shared how people were unschooling and raising their kids outside of the mainstream public education. Today, it is estimated that unschooling makes up 10 to 20 percent of the u.s's more than 2.5 million homeschooled kids when you talk about unschooling i think it's pretty self-clear like there are problems with it because it's in the definition you have no path there's no curriculum there's you let children decide what is and is not in their best interest and i think that should be pretty self-explanatory that for most children, that is not going to work. What I really wanted to talk today about was I wanted to read some stories from Reddit and share the experience of unschoolers who are talking about their time as parents and what this is doing to their children. Most of them are not aware that what they're doing seems crazy. Most of them are not aware that they seem to be actively harming their children. We're gonna read these Reddit stories. I'm gonna react to them. Y'all can react in the comments. That's what this video is. It's just me reacting to the wild world of unschooling. 
Hi everyone, I joined this group because I have some questions about unschooling as a grandmother as my grandchildren are being unschooled and we don't understand. Our daughter allows the children as much screen time as they want. She allows them to watch TV from morning till night. They have never been to school so they haven't been through that de-schooling process because they didn't need it and I am worried about them as they all talk like the cartoon characters they watch on TV. We live far away and we only see them a couple times a year but it is so sad when we visit and I see they haven't done much or learned much since the last visit. What do you recommend I do for them? Are there things I can send in the mail to foster learning on their own? What would you recommend as they cannot read but are 10, 9, 7, and 4 years old? Thanks in advance for your help. I think this post is so kind because this grandmother is expressing genuine concern while also not saying that what they're doing is wrong, but simply saying it doesn't seem to be working to teach them. And I don't understand why unschooling, personally, I don't understand why unschooling means children are allowed to watch TV from morning to night and have as much screen time as they want. Unschooling says we need to go back to the, the traditional roots of how people learned before school, which meant living. It doesn't mean screen time and TVs. Like children before school were working in factories and in fields and providing for their families. So if you're going to promote unschooling as what children did before traditional schools existed, in my opinion, you should be giving them assignments because even if they didn't have school, they would have boundaries, consequences, and expectations. And it seems that many people use unschooling as an excuse to not parent, which is what it sounds like this is. And then the response, ah, the response. Okay, this is from an unschooling parent. Unschooling is all about trust. Try and trust your daughter like she is trusting your grandchildren. Learning to read doesn't have to happen at the age of six. Many unschooled children learn to read much later, even in their teens, and they go on to be great readers. When learning doesn't happen by force, but by choice, we never lose our love for learning and we become lifelong learners. Your grandchildren are likely learning more than you think. Kids in school are forced to memorize things they have no interest in, and then they forget most of it as soon as the test is over. Unschooled kids learn what matters to them and has meaning to them. If you want to send something, ask your daughter if they have a wish list or ask your grandkids what they're interested in and send them books or resources that match their interest. Okay, first of all, the good. Yes, if they have an interest, ask them about it, find out what they want to learn and then provide resources that will help them. That's a great response. But the, ide the idea, the frustrating thing for me is learning to read doesn't have to happen at the age of six. When the grandparent mentioned that the children up to the age of 10, none of them knew how to read. And it says many unschooled children learn to read much later, even in their teens, and they go on to be great readers. It is not, it is true that people do learn to read at later ages, but the reason you want your child to be reading as soon as their brain is capable of learning it is because again, the brain is a muscle and the more you use it, the more it is capable of. And when you take away the option for by not giving them the tools to teach them to read, then they, they, their brain is not developing. It's not, that muscle is not active and you're actively harming your child in that way. Um, and it says when learning doesn't happen by force, but by choice, we never lose our love for learning. That's not true. Learning you don't um, you don't force love, but if you don't grow it, if you don't if you don't tend to it, if you don't care for it, if you don't show that you as a parent are learn that is it is important to learn by showing how you learn by teaching yourself by demonstrating how you learn to your children, then the learning to love learning cannot be cultivated. I, I don't know if the words I said make sense, but learning, the love of learning has to be cultivated. And the younger it is cultivated, the easier it is to develop an interest in learning. I speak as someone who has witnessed unschooling happen to many people around me accidentally because of homeschool neglect. And I have family members who are behind and cannot work in the careers that they may have been interested in because they did not have the resources and tools that gave them the option to learn. Anyway, I, that's my response to this comment. Okay, let's talk about this mom's comment in the Radical Unschooling Facebook group. 
Can you please give me some encouragement about how we are living our lives right now? I feel like radical unschooling is too good to be true and it is this special magical loophole that I stumbled on and it fits my life perfectly. But it feels like it's my secret at the moment. Like how is this even a thing? To allow my nine-year-old twins to stay up late, sleep in until their hearts desire, play on their devices until their hearts desire, eat what they're learning and eat what they want. And mainly, no more forced learning, test or homework. Lots of hearts. I see all of my friends struggling with the challenge of online learning, and I feel so bad that they aren't here with me doing the unschooling thing. I'm loving this philosophy that kids will inevitably learn what they need to know without anxiety. It's basically how life was before I hesitantly enrolled them in public school from kindergarten to third grade. It's dreamy. It's wonderful. I can't wait to be at a point where I shout all of this from the mountaintops. But for now, I only feel comfortable expressing my joy to all of you who are in the same realm of understanding. Just a few months ago, my knee-jerk reaction was that it seemed like a cop-out and their minds need school. But something happened inside me and I realized that this lifestyle fits perfectly into our lives, especially at this point in 2020. I couldn't be more at peace considering the mess of the world we are living in, knowing that my babies are with me, being influenced by who and what I introduced to them. I'm just so happy right now, yet hiding. LOL. Oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts on this post, but... I want to scream, it sounds like child abuse. (laughs) Um, Let's start with, okay. When we talk about unschooling being what it was like before traditional school, no child was allowed to stay up as late as they wanted, sleep until their hearts desired, play on their devices until as much as they wanted and eat what they want. How is access to food as much as you want unschooling? I I don't understand. Um, Also, how, giving children access to food all of all that you want that will lead to disordered eating because i'm just that's that's all i'm going to say about that high restrictions and high access are both disordered and when i read this post this says to me i do not like to parent because um so she says it's this is how their life was before i enrolled them in public school at kindergarten from ages zero to five children absorb so much of life that is not in a textbook and of course when you when you start getting older you need to absorb things that you don't learn by day-to-day life you're not learning to walk to talk to eat to address adults around you and how to wear clothes and how to become friends with people that's what you're learning from ages zero to five you continue to learn those things maybe not walking and talking but you know social skills and that sort of thing but from ages zero to five you're not thinking about academic things but once you start going to school the reason you're going to school is you you're learning things that are that are not life skills that a toddler and a three and a five-year-old can learn reading math science history None of those things can be absorbed by living. They have, you have to seek them out and they need to be taught in order for you to know that you don't know them. Anyway, so when I see this, no more forced learning test or homework and they can play on their devices until their heart's desire, stay up late, all of that, that just screams, I don't want to discipline my children because after they go to public school, they need more than just, oh, you're learning to walk, talk, and live, basically. They need a full life of teaching, and this parent doesn't want to do any of that, so she just pulled them out of school entirely. That's that's what it literally sounds like to me. Honestly, this post breaks my heart. She says, this might end up being long, so if you read it all the way through, thank you so much. My 10-year-old wants to learn to read. She's very frustrated about not being able to, like she thinks she's stupid and it just breaks her heart. She is so good at so much, but focusing on paper has never been her strong point. That is actually why we got into unschooling to begin with. It has been years, honestly, with no issues. She reads Dick and Jane with my mother, no one else. And to be honest, I kind of think she has memorized enough to play through the books, but I don't know. Anytime she tries to read something else, she just makes up what it says because, and she's an amazing storyteller. She wants to write stories, but right now she can't. So she just tells them. She'll record herself telling them sometimes. Her vocabulary is broader than the majority of adults I know, including myself. I notice most people say kids learn to read by reading to them, especially when they're little. She never had interest in that. I stopped trying when I realized I was literally forcing her to sit with me and read. She hated it. It wasn't fun for her, and so I stopped when she was still a toddler. She would like to sit with my mom and be read to, so it's not like no one ever read to her. We've tried more than once to help her learn, but it just ends up frustrating her and in turn whoever is trying to help. She wants to quit, so we quit. I am heartbroken for this little girl. 
I had a sibling who did not want anyone to teach her how to ride a bike and who actively fought all of the ways that we taught her how to ride a bike until I said, as your older sister, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to force you to learn because you want to ride a bike, but you're refusing to, to be taught. And it was a very feisty afternoon, but by the end of the afternoon, my sister knew how to ride a bike and we used to cry and laugh about that. It was so funny how she hated being told that what she was doing was the wrong way to ride the bike and she was gonna fall. But when she learned and when she finally listened to me and let me teach her, it was an amazing experience. But that's for a bike. Um, reading, let's get to going back to this point. No child should feel stupid because their parents are bad at parenting. <laughs> and yet this little girl is having to suffer because her parents decided to neglect her education. It stands out to me that the mother says that the, a toddler showed no interest in learning to read or being read to, so she stopped. I, I don't understand why your toddler is deciding what is and isn't interesting. If, you, if you're forcing them to sit and read, then perhaps that is bad. But I think about all the ways that my family read that wasn't just my dad reading to me. My dad would read to my mom while she cooked dinner. My mom would read to my dad on road trips. It just became a part of our everyday life that my parents read to each other and they read to the whole family in, in that aspect. And so no one was forcing me to sit there. I could go and walk off and not listen to the book if I wasn't interested in, interested in hearing it. But there was a constant aspect of books and how amazing they were and why we wanted to read them. And you don't have to sit and force your child to re read with you, but you don't have to not read to them. I, I don't, I don't. And I think saying that, I think saying that you tried to do something with your toddler, it didn't work out and you gave up, speaks more about you as a parent and your poor parenting decisions than anything else. Anyway, that just makes me really sad. As I've mentioned, I was not unschooled, but I was educationally failed when it came to science and math. Math was hard for me, and without a proper teacher, I never was able to grasp algebra and higher concept math and repeatedly failed those classes into my college. My parents assumed I absorbed science by osmosis. We went to plenty of science museums, listened to lectures on dinosaurs and scientific topics, read National Geographic, and could research any areas of science we were interested in as children. But going to museums does not give you the scientific foundation you need to understand how basic science works. I cannot pass a biology class or understand physics or chemistry. If I had been inclined to study a science-based career such as medicine, I would have been far behind my peers. And while I was interested in science, I got bad grades in my Science 101 course in college, and I never pursued it further because I had no high school background in that topic, and I felt behind. As an adult, I am teaching myself nutrition and constantly learning new to me science basics that would actually help with my everyday life. If I had a proper education, I wouldn't feel robbed as I do now. My experience as a homeschooler is not unique. Data has shown that homeschooled girls tend to be behind in math and science. And when I think about unschooling, I'm actually scared for these children and how far behind they may be educationally, how they will thrive as adults. It is interesting to look at data from studies on unschooling. There aren't many, but there is a 2013 study by Boston College professor Peter Gray. He looked at the outcomes of 75 who adults who had been unschooled as children. He said unschooling benefited them for higher education and careers by promoting their sense of personal responsibility, self-motivation, and desire to learn. Although most respondents to the study were positive and enthusiastic about their experience, three were unhappy, stating they came from dysfunctional social socially isolating families. One who grew up in the UK wrote, I actively disagree with unschooling because I believe that it is a very easy way for unwell parents to bring their children up without those parents needing to actively participate and integrate into society. Because of my mother's poor health, she found it difficulty making friends and generally disliked attending social events. I think this was the main reason she decided to unschool us. This respondent went on to a higher education in the fine arts and had a job as an art teacher, not because she was actually interested in art or enjoyed teaching, but because she didn't feel qualified for anything else. She didn't develop a satisfactory plan for her own life, according to her. I also think it's interesting that the study says that unschooling benefited them when it came to personal responsibilities, self-motivation, and desire to learn. 
if you are self-motivated, you have a high sense of personal responsibility and a desire to learn, you're going to thrive whether you're unschooled, homeschooled, or in public school. Children who have this sense of personal responsibility will find ways to achieve what they dream. That is what I say when it comes to my homeschooling experience, is I've always been very self-motivated and I really wanted to learn. So I taught myself and I did all right when it came to college because I picked a career that in the major that was not dependent on the topics in school that I missed. I know people who say, but children don't need high school degrees. You can get an apprenticeship or work in a field like welding that will that you don't need a high school degree for. But that also requires self-motivation and desire to learn. And if you haven't been taught how to be self-motivated and your desire to learn imparted through education those kind tech schools are not tech schools won't work either um does the american education system fail in not providing people past tech schools yes that has historically been true but unschooling doesn't necessarily provide a path to a tech school and it's really frustrating to me to see the number of people bragging that they by unschooling their children they can put them in tech schools and apprenticeships because if that's the only, you, because these people complain that American public schools don't provide a path to apprenticeship and tech schools, but at the same time, you are limiting your child to only a path to apprenticeships and tech schools by not giving them a well-rounded education. Now, I don't blame parents entirely because thinking unschooling is the answer to a failing public education system and a public education system that is weighed down by controversy and a lack of funding and a general apathy is not entirely their fault. I do blame them for child neglect. But I understand that there is a general attitude that is anti-public education in this country. And unschooling is a symptom of a decades-long disease that is eating away at our public schools in America. And frankly, I am very tired of it. The American public school system has always been revolutionary. It needed reforms, it needed changes, but it is revolutionary. The idea that any of us can get an entirely free education and pursue a degree in any subject matter, that is not something that has existed throughout much of human history. And in my opinion, unschooling is just one more symptom of that attack. But American public schools need all of us. They need all of us to help fight for funding for schools that suffer from a lack of proper funding. They need us to fight for kids who need early intervention and they need us to fight for the rights of all children to get the education that they deserve. To conclude this video, I want to highlight one way you can help kids in one classroom. My friend Jen is a teacher in a Title I school and she's currently working to stock her classroom for ahead of, during summer break. Title I schools are named that because they serve students who need more intervention in order to give them a proper education. And Jen works hard to help give these kids the educational foundation they need for their success. It would mean so much to me and to her class of kiddos if we could get her classroom stocked ahead of the school year. I've linked her Amazon wish list in the video description and I'd love if you checked it out and pitched in to help Jen's classroom. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. It took me a couple days to film. As you can see, I finished most of it on the mic. I thought this would happen and it did happen. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this video could use a lot more data. It could use a lot more facts, but this is just the bare bones, in my opinion, of the problems of unschooling and my honest reaction to it without like spending days and weeks researching. I just wanted to get some words out because I'm so frustrated by so many videos of child neglect that I've seen on the internet. Anyway, Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to check out Jen's Amazon wish list. and I will see all of y'all later. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.